Just how many times, how many times have we gone down State Highway 1 and been crying on the way home because we lost? How many times? I think I've got a bromance going on with Leo McDonald. He's come here, he's transformed the Blues. They're getting off the line, they're tackling. How good have we seen? Look at this. Oh, forget those. Don't even worry about that <laughs> shit. Take a photo of that, people. We're on top. So good. And look. I just love a donut. <laughs> Breakdown is brought to you by Neurofen Zavance. Available every day at Chemist Warehouse. And welcome to The Breakdown. I am Laura McGoldrick. I'm filling in for the fabulous Kirsty, who is away having a well-earned break. Nice to have a bit of Crusaders representation on the panel, if I'm honest. Joined uh, by the usual panel here tonight, Mills Mulliana, Sir John Kerwin, who is very passionate about a donut, which I respect, uh, and Jeff Wilson. Uh, great to be here with you, lads. Plenty to unpack from the weekend. Mills, I think probably the most important thing we need to ask today is you're definitely a blues man, given what happened over the weekend. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Good on you. <laughs> Blues this week. I brought you all a donut too, so don't worry. I brought you all one. <laughs> no more donuts in Dunedin. <laughs> yeah, no know. more donuts in Dunedin. We are off the mark, lads. You watch now. You just watch our soar. On the charge. The fact we lost a couple of key guys to knee injuries, that's not <laughs> ideal. Doesn't matter. The next team will step up. Look, it was nice to be in Dunedin when it happened. Um, Moana Pacifica put up a fight. But like you say, all the action was in Wellington and Hamilton yesterday. And there was some great rugby played. Some fantastic rugby played. A lot of action. A lot to get into to uh, debrief the weekend now. So let's have a look. Super Rugby with Neurofen available, of course, at Chemist Warehouse. We do love Chemist Warehouse. I certainly do. I've got to stay out of that place. We're going to get to the Crusaders shortly. There is plenty to unpack there. But let us start with the Blues, who kept the Chiefs scoreless 25 nil. I think it surprised us all. Jeff, for the neutral uh, observer here, how did you feel the game went? Because Bowden Barrett, even post-match, said it was, just a, it was just an odd game. Well, it's an odd game when you're down to 13 men and down to 14 men on multiple occasions, and all of a sudden you have to defend for long periods of time. And there were tries turned over, mistakes from the Chiefs. The Chiefs probably blew about 10 opportunities in the game. And so for them to not score a try, to not score a point, I think they'll be bitterly disappointed. But this is probably all about the Blues. I mean, you talk about a team that's establishing a culture, doing it without um, their great uh, their signing in the off-season. But they've got a number of guys out with injuries. Finlay Christie was ruled out late. JK, this was impressive for all the reasons you talked about as you prepared to eat your donut. But I think <laughs> for the Blues, this could be a critical moment given what they've got coming up on Friday night, which will possibly set them up for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I, Leon McDonald said today that it was his best performance as a coach. Um, and keeping, keeping the Chiefs out was amazing. Now, something you need to be careful of, they did blow a few opportunities that would have given them some momentum mills, especially just before half-time, they could have gone in a lot closer. But the thing that impressed me that with the Blues, A, how quick they're actually attacking when they get a roll on. Mm. Haven't seen that probably since round one. And secondly, they've got so much confidence and aggression in their defensive line, especially off the goal line. I mean, years gone by, you'd see them hesitate because they didn't have that confidence. Yeah, they had some they were really fluent about the game in, in terms of you know how they started. And you've got to, if you strip it right back, he's rotated a fair bit. He's used a lot of young young guys leading into this. So guys that have actually returned, um, you know, back into the fold in, in a big match, they were really clinical. Um, you know, Bowden Barrett was massive in terms of how he sort of played, but the intensity too, you sort of felt it from the start, and they didn't let, let off regardless of the fact they were down to 13 men. That's what I really loved about it. And, and on, on the flip side, the Chiefs, they looked a bit lost. I mean, they lost a bit of leadership, you know, um, obviously with Anton and Brown going off, but also, you know, around what they were going to do when they had their, that sort of advantage, two-man advantage. What, what, did, what were they going to do to try and score those points? It almost became frantic when it needed to be sort of really calm. Uh, speaking of calm, I just JK, I was so impressed at the way Bowden Barrett, his, he, he was so emphatic on the field. I, I didn't realise, I think, just how much of an influence he was going to have in that match, but it was pretty clear from the get-go. Yeah, they did that inside ball quite a lot too, so they'd seen something in the, in the video, but he, he was just really, really calm. And I think, you know, we see his brilliance, the offload, we see his kicking game, um, Goldie, but actually 
when they were down to 13 men, he's just out there kicking it, you know, taking over the game, giving confidence. This is on the back of 20 minutes of rugby. Yeah. On the back of 20 minutes of rugby, he comes out and put up this performance. And we always talk about leadership. You need experience. They've got some of that in their Ford pack. You've got to like the way that they're tracking. They're continuing to get standout performances across the park. But I think Bowden is the X factor. He's the guy that's going to come in and drive them forward towards a championship if they're going to get there. And it allows them to play Stephen Perifeta at fullback Mills. Mm. I think that's critical for them. I think that's his best position. It allows them to have two guys who can control the game. The other side of it too is he's not having to goal kick Bowden. Yeah, amen. There's no pressure on him in regards to that. Perifeta yeah. is doing that job. Yeah, and he is. He's just taking that sort of um, that, that stress off him a little bit. But one area I actually thought they were really good at right from the get-go and they targeted it was, was the breakdown. They were so aggressive that it almost caught the Chiefs off guard. You know, you know they're, they're counter-rucking. Guys were getting up off their feet when, when there was someone there. So they obviously analysed that aspect of, of the Chiefs game, that someone would be um, you know, isolated and really attacked there. And it just almost, as I said, it, it caught the Chiefs off guard and it made them frantic. It's sort of like, you know, are we going to get clean ball? Are we not? Who's going to come in there? We've got to protect it. When they protected the ball, they drew a lot of numbers and the Blues were really smart about fanning out. So... Game tactics was, was was on point, so I guess that's what Liam McDonald is is, um, is saying. You know, it's probably the best game that he's had from a coaching point of view. Yeah, execute the game plan. I think that whole kicking thing's really interesting because, um, you know, does that open up the All Black spot where you say, well, if Geordie's at fullback, he's our kicker, and and Bodie was Geordie at fullback? Yeah, of course he is. I've told you that. Okay. You don't think he is? Well, he could be at second five. Oh, there we go. No, but seriously, There's another not, not having the pressure, not having the pressure to kick for some players, might suit them a wee bit more. And if you've got a competent kicker... Um, and hasn't Perifeta come on, yeah. um, Mills, into that role where he's kicking and playing well? So, you know, that, that's, that's the best performance. But we've got... I think the Blues, you know, once again, comes down to Crusaders, doesn't it? <laughs> Our Crusaders' uh, yeah, representation at the yeah. end of the table yeah. over there. You know, like, if, if that's still the yardstick. Yeah, I think you the, know, the, the Chiefs missed a few opportunities. Yeah. You've got to go down... The Chiefs, the, the Chiefs did exactly what they did against the Crusaders. They panicked. They had opportunities, they had plenty of position, they had plenty of ball, but they weren't able to go to that extra phase, that one step longer, take one more um, reset, then go again. They kept looking for it too quickly. And as you talked about, uh, the Blues focused really heavily on stopping the carrying. Um, and Peter Gus Sowakula had been doing that so well for the Chiefs. They, far they focused on it, they targeted it, and it's not like... He didn't have an impact on the game, but he didn't get them the same momentum and finish like they'd been doing earlier on in the season. Look, clearly the best two teams defensively in this competition right now for me are the Blues and Crusaders. They're doing it and doing it well. Look, the Blues bar 10 minutes against the Hurricanes could quite easily be undefeated so far this season if you look at the way that they've gone. That is where this team is at. That's the depth that they've built. Uh, built. You know, I, I'm, I'm impressed incredibly with the talent they've got on show, but also it's performing on a consistent basis. What do you do now if you're the Chiefs team, the coach, you're sitting there thinking, there's a bit to unpack from, from this weekend. Where do you start? Well, I've got to re regroup, obviously. You know, they lost two home games on the, on the trot. Uh, they'll be really disappointed. And you've seen you know, the reaction from Sam Kane after the game is, you know, obviously de dejected. And, um, great fans as well. But they've got a chance now to really bounce back. There's a big couple of weeks, especially when the crossovers happen. They've got a, a match against a um, Wine Pacifica team that um, are going to be physical once again. So... I think and it's, it's a really good chance for them to really, you know, um, strip things back a little bit, get to um, so, you know, really simplistic, you know, and hopefully get some of those, you know, those guys back. You know, you've spoken about Retallick, you know, Tupo Vai wasn't sort of playing. They're really key guys in terms of, you know, the, the, the dynamics of their team and, and how they want to play and, and that calmness uh, that they'll that be wanting to bring. As a head coach, we, we, when we saw the coach of, of the Chiefs say that, we, you know, that down to 13 men, they just overcomplicated everything, the Chiefs. They just made it so much harder than they had to the whole time. How do you stop that? Is that just lack of experience? Is that just not knowing how to capitalise on those moments, JK? Yeah, look, I think there was a couple of things happening the other night. They couldn't create any pressure to put the Blues back under the pump. I looked at the clock. 70 minutes had gone past. They hadn't had the ball. Um, you know, I think, I think Bryn Gatlin's been outstanding. He probably didn't have his best evening the other night. And those things need to happen. But you're better, you're better off having a wobble now and guys looking at their form and, you know, and you go, well, OK, we've got the, the Trans-Tasman coming up and there's still a chance. They're still in the top eight. So, you know, if you're Clayton, you just don't panic. You go, here we go, let's, you know. In short, they miss Josh Uwani as well. 
They missed his attacking ability, the fact whether it was starting or coming off the bench, the ability for him to change the game. That's where they've got a nice balance between him and Bryn Gatlin. I think they missed him. He was really, really good against the Hurricanes, created a lot of play. They didn't need to be as direct with him because he was able to use his running game. I think they missed that. But you have to give all of the credit on that performance to a team that did it without all of the complement of players for a long part of that game. Absolutely. Well, the big talking point, of course, from the weekend of rugby was the Crusaders and Canes game, that final moment, those final moments. But before we get to that, how about the committee meeting to decide whether to kick for goal or to touch? Have a listen to Nisbo here. Now, what's the message here? Do we win it now? Are we going to go to Golden Point? Surely the players can make up their own mind. They don't have to expect the coaches to tell them what to do. What's going on? This went for a long period of time. I was at the game, and, and I think there was even another occasion, occasion in that play where Artie Savia looked again to Corey Jane just to be really clear what the option was. And look, I, I, here's the thing, right? Stop. <laughs> well, what stop? Stop. OK, let's go around. What would you have done? You, here's kick the thing. a goal or kick to the corner? I, can, I, can I explain why I do it, though? I take no. the three point. No, you don't you, have that what's time. What's the point? You don't I have got, that time. I have got the time. No, I have got the time. You take the shot at goal and give yourself multiple chances to win the game, what not just one. What if your team's one. out on its feet? What's that? Ask Sean the, Johnson. Ask goal? Sean Johnson. It took him four guys on the, goes on the weekend. Well done, Warriors, so you by the way. So you would have kicked for goal? Kick for the goal, get to golden point, and then all of a sudden, it's more than, you'll get <laughs> more than one opportunity to win. By making that decision, it was on one play against one of the best defensive Lineouts in the game yeah. who got up and competed and made it incredibly difficult for them to succeed. I understand if you are if there is no other option, but for me, this wasn't the right one in this game. You were playing better than that. Yeah, oh, I think for me, when I was watching it, and you've got to remember, I mean, it's not so much what you would have done if you were a player. I think it's what you would have done as a coach. I mean, you've got the benefit of sitting there and, and, and looking at the situation. You haven't got the hype downstairs making a real calm decision. And it's usually the coaches that sort of sit there and, and go, OK, here's what, what do we do here? Without, you know, without the emotion, I would have thought they would have gone for a shot and then say, let's reset and, and, and go again, given the dynamics of, 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 of what's sort of going on. The, and, and also, against a team that has not, you know, given away a, a drive in, sort of, in terms of the, in, in terms of a drive. So I would have. No, this is I'm, I'm, I would have. JK, I, I feel like I, I might thought... be misinterpreting this, but I feel like you have something to say on the match. No, are you, no. <laughs> what would you do? Take a shot at goal. Oh, 3-1. Well what, done. What, you're happy well with Well done, whoever made the decision. Say. Is this the reason you're not coaching anymore? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. But I would have <laughs> gone out done. and flames. Actually, you don't need to explain it. I did go out You don't need to explain it. I did go out in flames. Pure and simple. They, they had tried to win it. They tried to win it. And they could have they tried had confidence in themselves. Kick to the corner. Now. They could have tried to win okay, it. Okay, so 3 1. Times. I get that. 3 1. I would, have take, I would have kicked to the corner. Thought it was a great decision. However, the next thing is was it the right decision from the referee to get it wrong when the player gets attacked in the air? Oh, we're going to look at it. I know you'll be feeling passionate about it, but. We are, we are going to look at it. I just want to ask one quick question before we do. Mills, as a, a, as a captain, so you're a captain, what does that say to you and your senior players group? You've got your coach coming down two or three times just to reiterate how he wants it done. Is that not the players group? Isn't there a point as the coach that you sort of go, right, well, you boys are on the ground, you know what it's all about? Well, I was, I was really surprised that they wanted, the coaches wanted to go for the sideline. And hence my point about, you know, you get the opportunity as a coach to actually really say, OK, where's the game at without the emotion? Obviously, Artie was sitting there with his players and wanting to go to, to goal, so... Um, I, I don't know. To, to go to, to JK's point, perhaps they thought, OK, let's, let's back ourselves. The coaches have given us a, the ability to go back ourselves and they might have seen something. But uh, when they sit down on Monday to talk that over, because they will, um, I, I'm sure there'll be some honest words from, from both sides in terms of what they thought. Um, Do we know what the coach said? Oh, Do we actually know what they said? We know what, what Artie said. Well, he gave them the line-out call as well. He went like that. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't interpret it. <laughs> Let's take a look uh, at some of the footage from those final moments uh, in the match there, which, uh, like we say, a lot of talking points. A lot of talking points. And Artie Savia, not too happy with it. Jeff? Well, let's, I want to hear what he's got to say. What yeah, let's, let's take a look there. to see what Artie said post-match with Ian Smith. I'm lost for words, eh? Um, I've seen some calls that, uh, that go the other way, but unfortunately it didn't happen tonight. Um, yeah, mate, I'm speechless at the moment. Pretty heartbroken, eh? Yeah. Um, you know, as a leader... You know, I, I like to put pressure on and demand, you know, from the officials and, and making sure they're doing everything they can to get uh, to keep these calls right. Because uh, at the end of the day, it can come to either or, and we get an apology the next week, but it's too late. So, um, 
without saying anything disrespectful, just would love to have the officials, you know, demand better. Chief, I know you spent an inordinate amount of time on this today. Uh, what are your thoughts? Are you any the wiser? My head hurts. <laughs> Thinking about this, watching it, talking to people. Look, this is a really difficult situation. And, and you can understand some of the frustrations from Adi Savia. He's been in so many close contests in recent time. Brenda Pickerall came into this game late after James Dolman was ru ruled out through COVID-related issues. So they've had um, Brenda Pickerall this year for four games. And unfortunately, they've lost those four. But that has nothing to do with this. Bottom line, the last two weeks they've had opportunities to win and they haven't. And this one here was probably the most difficult for a referee, in my view, to adjudicate. And when you look at it, it comes down to if you went to the law and you went and you had looked at all the angles, you could possibly find a reason to do exactly what Brendan Prickerall did or give a penalty. And unfortunately, that's the situation that we're about. And if we look at it, and JK, you're a line and expert, and you're saying he took him in the air, I think for me, Scott Barrett, he goes for the ball at the same time Adi Savia does. That's they it. both are in, they are both holding the ball. They are both in, in contact with it. It's what happens here where it gets complicated, as then all of a sudden he gets the ground mills. And this is the challenge. Scott Barrett then falls on the far side. This is how it plays out. And then it becomes an unplayable. I, I honestly don't think there was an easy way for this to have been um, um, done. And the hard thing is, you know, uh, I know there was some frustration even from some of the fans who don't really understand what's happened at the end of the game. I disagree with the fact they both had the ball in their, in their hands. I think Artie's clearly got that. He's ended up on the ground first. And then, and then Scott Barrett has now come over, over the top of him. Yes, they're fighting for the ball. But Artie's clearly won that. So what is the referee looking at then? Okay, so who's won the ball and gone down to the ground? Is it is it Artie or is it Scott Barrett? Okay, so if, if it's not Scott Barrett, then what's he done? What's he actually done there to actually to stop that there? Because as Artie's hit the ground, he's he looks like he's dominated that, that ball. And so I guess that's where Artie's coming from and the, the fact that, you know, well, what's what's he um, you know, you know, refereeing? I suppose the disappointing part is we're sitting here talking about it and he's frustrated. I hope the referees come out and say something about it. You know, actually, I, I, you know, I imagine up. they will. Oh, they'll have the meeting tomorrow. And well, what are they going to say? That they what should have gone upstairs. Have yeah, well, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. Like, we go upstairs if someone trips over a blade of grass nowadays. So why didn't they just go upstairs? Because me, I go, oh, and, and great courage, great courage from the Crusaders to have a go at the, at, you know, have a go at the defensive line out there close to the line. Second thing is, I thought once the defensive player was in that situation, he then has to release. Okay? He was playing so, the ball, though. He was playing yeah, for the okay. ball. So he Did you see the line-out throw? It was actually down the Crusaders' yeah, that's, side. That's irrelevant, right? No, no, so, no, it's not irrelevant, because... It, it, look, it's like... It, no, it's the, irrelevant. the Hurricanes controlled that situation. It's irrelevant if you let me finish. It's irrelevant You never let me finish. I uh, know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what happens? Attacks in the air, but then they go to ground, right? Then Scott Barrett has to roll away, because Artie's won it, and he's on his side of the ruck. So I saw Dalton Popoli'i... Um, yesterday get penalised and he was trying to get out of the ruck. So yeah, Scott Barrett's got to get out of the way. So at least the referee, I understand, making decisions. Look, the game's over. Artie has asked you, all black captain, Hurricanes captain, can we have a look? And you go, nah, made my decision. Just go upstairs and then we're not talking about this stuff. Well, apparently you can't because he's blowing the whistle for full time, so you can't go to the TMO once full time. Oh, that's just an right. excuse, I reckon. Well, that I did, I'm not, it didn't come from me, JK. I know, so. but it's just that. That is just... Laura doesn't make the rules. Don't just make the rules. It's just a stupid rule. But you see, look, I, I do it's agree with the It's just a stupid fact. rule. Well, I, make a call because I, you, you get on the phone because that... Oh, no, he doesn't... Bryce doesn't reply to my emails. But look at look at. Look at the result. Look at the result. I know how you feel, Artie. Look, look at the end result. Look what it, look what's happened. You've got a team here who's who could have won the game based on a decision that they could have gone upstairs. This is what we're trying to stop in terms of going upstairs. Isn't that what you want? You don't want to get to a rugby world cup and have this this uh, a few days later and and had it known that there could, should have been a penalty there. And that was my last point, Goldie. My trouble is everyone who makes the decision to go at goal goes. We now can't trust the officials. No, in a tight situation. I, I disagree what everyone said entirely. to me. Oh, no, let's go to point because, wow, you know, what's going to happen at the line? We don't know. Yeah, but if the Hurricanes execute that properly and they get a clean line outtake and get their set drive set up, they put themselves in that position, in a contestable position to try and win the game. That was the first risk that they took. This is a result of that. When it gets to it, we're talking about a line out drive more.
the fact anything can happen in this situation, and anything <laughs> did. And anything did. It, it, look, I think look, that was a lot. I think that was a lot for us all to digest there, and I'm not sure we got a really clear answer, but the answer <laughs> I do have for you is the Crusaders won that one. So that's pretty good. Now, we have decided to give Jeff the job of putting together his power rankings, but before we go get into that, let's take a look at the Super Rugby table as it sits right now. I, I do really wonder whether I'll get to finish this. The way JK's going today. But anyway, this is what we're looking at right, right now. Sugar, okay, we're almost <laughs> at the halfway stage of Super Rugby Pacific. We're almost there. The Brumbies are at the halfway stage. They get the weekend off, as do the Fiji and Drua. They are now just playing the teams based in New Zealand. That's how it works. There's your Blues. There's your Blues, the Crusaders, the Reds, the Waratahs, and the Chiefs now. They slip down all the way to sixth. If we look at the next page, this is where it's going to get interesting as well, this is the force. There are the Hurricanes sitting right now at two and four. The Rebels, the Hollanders, yes, they've jumped up two spots. Here they're they right come. there. The Drua and the Moana Pacifica. Moana, of course, play tomorrow, and then they've got another game this weekend. So by the end of this weekend, everyone has played eight games. That means everyone's got six to go. We're going to head across the Tasman then, and then all of a sudden, we'll find out who's going to make these spots. And if you are one through four, guess what, this year? You are at home for a quarter-final. So as it stands right now, I think this might change. The Brumbies will be playing the Hurricanes at home. The Blues will be at home playing the Force. The Crusaders will be at home playing the Chiefs. Imagine that. And then the Reds, they'll be playing the Waratahs at four and five. But a lot can happen now because what we know, we saw it last year, when the Trans-Tasman side of this competition came about, New Zealand teams went on a run. So, my power rankings... The top teams at number five. At number five, I have the Brumbies. Why do I have the Brumbies? Because they've done it. They're on top of the table. They're the fifth team at the moment. I see being competitive. What we know is that they're accurate. They're disciplined. They've got plenty of experience. They're consistent on their performances every season. They continue to play and play well. They can rely on their set piece. They're a side that will learn from their experiences last year against the New Zealand teams. So you've got to say they're going well. Let's have a look at my fourth ranked team. Brad Thorne's doing a fantastic job in Australia with a red side. They were dominant against the Brumbies at home. Both of these teams have sheared one apiece this season, but with James O'Connor leading the ship, they're a team that have got plenty of talent, the likes of Dangunu, the likes of Pattaya. They've got plenty to like across the, the um, a loose forward trio as well. So they're fronting up and fronting up well. Now, this has changed the top three since Friday. The Chiefs are at three. And why do I still see them there? I think they're playing the quality and type of rugby that's going to stress the Australian teams and they can get on a run with some momentum. So then you think about the way they've performed to date in this competition. They've been exciting to watch. They've had some standout players. They're missing a couple of key guys at the moment. Brody Retallick, no Tupo Vai. Big loss in Anton Leonard-Brown. That might hurt them uh, later on in the season. But they've always been a side that have had players step up. Now we're waiting. JK's waiting with bated breath. <laughs> He's waiting with bated breath. I've got the Crusaders at number two. Oh, oh. oh don't like that over here. Jay, that's why he's smiling and Flora as as doesn't like it. Remembering this is our defending Super Rugby champions. When we had a full competition, this is the team that was unbeatable. I don't think they're as dominant with ball in hand this year as they have been. They're not doing it as easy. We've seen in the last two weeks they've been pushed right to the brink and edge, remembering they're missing the likes of Sam Whitelock. This guy's been in fantastic form. I see them at the moment. They're not playing their best rugby, but doing enough to win. They will get better. I'm expecting them to open up. This is hard. This was difficult, but I'm going to do it. Clearly, it's the Blues. For you to go down to FMG Stadium, to take on the Chiefs in such good form, we'll see whether he's doing that in about two months' time. But to see Bowden Barrett doing this, to see them defending the way that they're defending, the pressure's on them now to deliver on a title. That's what the pressure is on. They delivered half a title last year. They've got their opportunity, JK, to deliver the Same full one. You, their mate, squad is strong. Yeah. They've got Roger Tuovasa-Shek coming back. Akira Ioane will be back. They've got depth. Their young guys are stepping up. They've got everything they need to be a champion. To be a champion. Right, over. Bring it. You lost me a bit at the end there, I'll be honest. Oh, you, uh, you stopped start, listening. I know, you stopped to listening. Off. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to last, two and, and then I and thought, then, ooh, then, uh, That ended. was done as done. I look at those teams. I'm offended. I'm still, why are you offended? Half a title. 
<laughs> so you haven't, got past, last year. you haven't got that's past offensive. last year. You haven't got that's past offensive. last year. <laughs> actually, it's the first time tonight you've been talking some sense. I, I actually agree with the lineup, and I think that if we could get a final of the Blues Crusaders, it'd be outstanding. I don't know if that can happen, but... I've got no, the poor old... Hey, the Brumbies are on top of the table at the moment. How, how can you have them fifth? Well, they just got beaten by the Reds comprehensively up in Brisbane, and I look at the way that the Australian teams performed last year in the Trans-Tasman competition. It wasn't impressive. The Reds were the standout team when it came to playing the New Zealand sides, and I think that they're best prepared, because they're going to need to get wins. They're going to need to get... I think you'll need to get about six in bonus points to make the playoffs. And now, for those Australian sides, and for the Brumbies, it's all in front of them. It is all in front of them. This is a massive challenge for them. But I believe the Australian teams are better this year. Had a, did a podcast with Andrew Mertens uh, last week. Had a chat to him. He's loving the way Australian rugby's going well. I think they're paying his wages, clearly. But, bottom line, I think they're going well. Why? What's making them better? Ask Mills, oh, I think they're bringing a different style. And when we look at sort of the, the, um, the set piece stuff that we've been really trying to introduce and dominate there, I think they've actually started to find that sort of style that's similar to the, what the Drua and also Moana Pacifica are playing. They're a little bit expansive. The key would be is can they get set, set piece ball or can they get front foot ball and dominate that physicality? But I think in terms of the style they're trying to play, they might actually pip some teams early on considering that super round is in their own backyard nice and early. JK, I I'm think... I'm just putting my hand up because I feel like I'm at school. Well, um, I do run a tight ship. I you do, appreciate you the do. compliment. Exactly Thank you very you much. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Crusaders school at that. Um, <laughs> what a good yeah, one. No, what my, do you mean? My, my what biggest, do you mean? Biggest, what do you mean? Yeah. My biggest issue with the Australian competition, um, and I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, will be the breakdown and the aggressiveness that the New Zealanders bring to the breakdown. And I think... I like their style as well, Mills. I think it's a little bit depowered, if I, that's no disrespect to the Australian sides. Um, but I, I just don't know about the breakdown. So there's two things. I think next week's really important for the Blues. You know, if, if they get down there and win, it's amazing. If they get down there and get really close and could have won it. But then I'm really interested to see well, the Australian sides and the ruck and the power that we've got. At well, the that ruck. game in, in Christchurch could actually decide where the final plate. If you look down the track, if you're anticipating what could happen and get, getting that opportunity. So both of those teams will understand it. But I think the Blues going down there right now, I don't think they've been in a better place in terms of knowing they can perform. You talk about the Australian teams, though. I think all of a sudden, like this of Waratahs, they are 12 months further on from where they were last year. And they were disastrous yeah. last year. But the talent is starting to deliver. And some of their stars are coming back to the fold. So I, I look across the board and I think it's a lot more competitive than it was last year, but whether or not they can get some momentum. And one of those Australian teams needs to find a way to control their own destiny by being at home. Yeah, and I don't think... I think looking from an Australian point of view and some of those teams, I mean, we look at the New Zealand side, you know, the, the way we play hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. The, the, the gap's getting a little bit closer. And, we, and when you, you know, I suppose, compare it to um, what happened last year in the Championship with, uh, with the way the Australians came back with the All Blacks, it's kind of got that sim similar feel. So, whereas the New Zealand teams are here going, well, what, what does Australian bring? So, yep. the super round and going in the crossover games, man, they're, they're going to be big, especially those first couple of rounds. Very big game next weekend, and we'll be talking about it just briefly there, the, uh, the Crusaders taking on the Blues. It's time for JK's favourite moment of the show, I, I understand. Um, oh, he's got a bit sad now, his face. Oh, his <laughs> bottom lip's dropped. Um, it is trivia question time. You've got a few minutes, lads, to, to think this one through. Uh, and when we come back, we'll do the answer. But are you ready for this? Born ready. If it's about the Blues, he's, he's, he can't wait. I'm glad you two have made up now. You knew that was, was going to happen, eh? You put him at one because yeah, you guys yeah, were going to have Was that especially for him? <laughs> Funnily enough, I had them at three on Friday. <laughs> 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 now they're at one. God, that hurt. Uh, it was hard to listen to anyway. as well. Um, OK, so the question time. Here we go. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I'm Mills, I know ready. you like to take Born notes. Ready. Don't look at Let's mine. Go. Don't look at mine. <laughs> OK, the question is, when was the last time the Blues beat the Crusaders in Christchurch? Your stunned silence is very, very reassuring. They're oh. going to have a think about that when we come back. The answer, plus we're going to have a look at a few players... Did you pick ..who that? we think are going to... Ha Did I pick that? No, I do what I'm told. Yeah. Um, we are going to have a look at some players who are going to have a huge influence in the second part of this competition. We'll see you soon. There wouldn't be anyone beating the Crusaders. I don't know. Spencer running across... Did you beat them? Yeah. ..into a hole for Rapini. Oh, he's away! Rapini going to have to weigh on. Oh, straight past him. Straight past him. And it's McDonald into the line, slipping the first tackle back to McCaw. Richie McCaw! Now Kano breaking, running strongly. Jerome Kano gets it away to Walt. He's in! Okay, Bateman with the fit. Gets it back in field to Ralph. Ellis with it. Andy Ellis. Fred gets it down. 
to Tui Tabaki. So good on his feet. Tui Tabaki through the pass to Flavor. And the one goes to Tui And here's uh, an opportunity. Getting it wide. Now it's back for the corner. And there's no way they're going to stop. Now Moonga jabbing a little kick through. And it's fallen beautifully. And now here goes Brent Hall. And he's got the pace. Pops it to Francis. Tuna Fussy is there. Now Pulu probing. Pulu breaking. Pulu gets a lovely ball away. Duffy. Moana scores the first try of the night. And it's a beauty for the Blues. Jordan. Will Jordan. Almost through. Oh. He is through. Will Jordan. Kia welcome back to The Breakdown. We are on to the trivia question part of the uh, of the show. And, look, I've got three very stumped young gentlemen here with me. The question was, when was the last time the Blues beat the Crusaders in Christchurch? Got some bl Jeff Wilson doesn't care, apparently. I don't apparently. care. Um, I honestly Jeff don't Wilson. care. I've got no interest in this whatsoever. Well, JK you should know better this, buck though. up your <clears throat> ideas, buddy, because that's the question, and you're going to need to know that's, it this weekend as well. That's what you answer when you don't know. Yeah, no, so, you're doing a good job. You must have been okay. Ladies and gentlemen, would All you right. like the answer? Saturday the 13th, game started. <laughs> you used your the, phone. Game, the game started <laughs> at 2.30 pm. Hold on, hold on, what's that? Oh, oh, 1756. Look at that. It's on there. <laughs> Did you. Was that it? 1756. Did you give us a, like a. What? What? It was that long No, ago. that was a year. 1750? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking... Like, very, God, that's very time-specific. I, I don't know. Um, I don't okay, know. Mills, what do you 2004. got? 2004. Should we have a look? Let's have a little look. Oh, oh she stop blows. it. There she was blows. 27th of February, 2004. Was that the Lossie one? Boom, mate. Was that Lossie in the corner? 6,617 days ago. Uh, wow. Well, oh, was it? It feels like yesterday. It was like white back then, was it? Feels was, that like the was that the infamous one we ran to the corner? No, a repenny carved up. Yeah. It is that one, yeah, yeah. It is the one where he goes to the corner, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually said that to you. I oh, said, oh, no, it won't be that far back. I you put me off. I thought that was 2005, though. Is that Joe Rocker football? Yeah, that's Joe. In 22. Hey, hey, come on, guys. Come see me. We want some answers, man. Hey, <laughs> I, I gave I you that answer, you. and then... What? what? You, you know I gave you. Mate, I said it, it was that Carlos game. I said claim. it was that Carlos you game. Claim, Laura, and then you, you, claim. Claim. And then you played Deception, it? and then he said, nah, 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 it wasn't that game. Can't Laura, nah, the one since then. I was way too busy seeing that. I was way too busy seeing that. It's 6,000 days Tell these guys off. Tell these guys off. Take them off? Tell them off. So, oh, tell them off or give them a red card. Get you out of here. Get you out of here. Uh, now, if you guys do have a question for the team, you can check out our Instagram page, check all the details there and send one through. Now, this round has seen a lot of injuries, and the big one, of course, is Anton Leonard Brown. He did not look good off the back of that, um, and he's going to see a specialist. That is the line. He's seeing a specialist later this week, so we will know more. But, uh, Mills, your thoughts on that? It's pretty huge in the grand scheme of not just uh, the Super Rugby, but uh, the, the bigger picture for New Zealand rugby, because he looked in all sorts of pain. And Sam Kane even said post-match he didn't like the look of it. Yeah, massive as well. I mean, he's a, he's a leader within the Chiefs. And when you look at sort of that, he's just going into the ball. I am hope it's not an instability in terms of the shoulder. He's already sort of hurt. Um, but the bigger picture as well, uh, with, with the All Blacks and whatnot, um, he will be a massive loss. And he'll be hurting because he's only just come back from injury as well. We love a debate. We talk about positions in the All Blacks all the time. Anyone I spoke to, when you talk about the midfield, he's the first guy you write down, and that's who you're going to play with him, JK. I mean, that's the reality, the impact he's had. And he was just starting to show those signs. Yeah. Last year, he had that wee knee yeah. ni ni niggle. He didn't quite have that explosiveness. He was just starting to show those signs. So I can only hope that the news is in some way positive, but it didn't look good. And, and, and you know, all of a sudden, if you start talking significant shoulder injuries, those, those are a long process. So we've just got to hope, JK. Yeah, and I feel really sorry for Anton. I think he's an amazing young man. Um, you know, often talks about his mental health, so he's leading in that space. And, yeah, if it's the same shoulder, Mills, you know, that sort of doubles the problem. I, th I think the saddest thing um, that I think about is combinations. You know, he was a bit of a rock there yeah. when he was well. He hasn't been well for a couple of years, which has been tough. 
but it really puts pressure on our combinations. You know, when you start thinking about winning World Cups, you know, you go Ma Nonu, Conrad Smith, you know, um, yep. the great era from Australia with Horan and Little, you know, our locks have a pairing. I think there's positions where you've just got to know each other defensively, yep. Mills. You know, you've got to know that your mate's on your inside, but also just that little subtle stuff, you know, you go through a hole, you might throw a blind, blind pass, but you, it's not actually blind because you know you're there. So what is our midfield? We haven't had any consistency with Good You being out, Anton Leonard Brown being out. You know, it's it's. Uh, I'd say that Fozzy would be, um, you know, having a quiet grappa before he goes to sleep just to get to sleep. Well, there's a guy about six foot four who's been playing the Hurricanes the last yeah. couple of weekends. Uh, and all of a sudden, does that does become he... more of an option? Uh, as much as you're no. talking, as much as you're talking, no, wait, as much as you're talking about this one, I, I was really sad to see Shannon Frizzell go down in the first yeah. couple of minutes of the Highlanders game as well because yeah. the, the blindside flanker position was one we've talked about. Tubo Vai had been put into that role for the Chiefs. He's not out there at the moment either. Um, Akira Yawani is not out there either. Um, there's obviously a, clearly a number of Crusaders loose forwards that would like that responsibility, but just Shannon had been playing so well, yeah. Mills. Um, his carrying, his defensive work. Um, he's got a scan tomorrow, I understand. Uh, I text Brownie to, to, to find out the extent of it. But if it's an MCL, it might not be... It can be That could be a sort of six to six, seven weeks, and that's maybe not so bad. They lost uh, uh, Manaki Sowie Rickett as well, um, a similar injury. So, but, yeah, losing Shannon, I think. Huge for them, but also um, for that depth at the sixth position. Oh, I think in terms of the way he's been playing. He's in, he's in a struggling team. He was getting go forward ball. He just stepped... He stepped up another level um, mm. from where he sort of come from, and then to have this little setback. I hope the same. I hope it's only sort of something you know minor, that, that it's not not too long. But certainly, uh, with the way he's been playing, he's been huge. We've talked about big players and their impact on their teams, on the games, on the competition. And Jeff, there was a couple that you picked out uh, that you wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking up the Blues again. Can you stop, please? Oh, no, I'm Let's talking about because here. what's going on? Because you have to do a lot of things, and you have to you have to put together an environment. They've started to do that. You clearly they've done that with Liam McDonald. But then you've got to create depth, and you want to bring in experience. Now, for the last three seasons, we we haven't seen at Super Rugby level Luke Romano play anything like what we're seeing him play right now for the Blues. He's a reinvigorated player, was outstanding for Canterbury last year in the NPC, in the Bunnings NPC. He's come to Auckland, he's loving being here, he's seeing different things in a different environment. I'm just, I'm gutted he hasn't done this sooner, JK. The fact that he could have been somewhere else for three. He played two appearances last year for the Crusaders off the bench. He's come to Auckland and has clearly made a difference with this Blues team in terms of experience and developing players. This is one of the reasons when you see the depth that the Blues have created, there's another player I want to talk about in a moment, but for me, Romano, regardless of the odd card he gives away, but he's brought something they didn't have. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with you saying it must have been the hardest decision for him ever to leave. And when you talk about cultures, I think the Crusaders have probably led the way in the last 15 years. With players want to play. Yeah, Players want to yeah, play, right? Yeah, I understand that, but I think... You know, he, he is in the twilight of his career, so it would have been a really hard decision, but I, the rest of it I agree with. I why is he in the twilight of his experience. career? What, what, why, why are we putting well, a number He's 400, isn't he? How old is he? Well, I'll tell you what, I, no, one, no one wants to run into a Mills, I can tell you that for a fact, and you know you've been run into when he's got the ball. He's been he's well refreshed as well, a different environment, perhaps really hesitant to come up to Auckland initially, but now he's probably, I mean, uh, the leadership sort of aspect that he's been given, he's really th thrived in there, in, in, in there. and so... He's brought that steel amongst the uh, within within the Blues, and when you thought about it, when I looked at it and and, and the team they, they they put out, you know, himself um, and also um, who was the other lock, um, Goodhue, you know, they had a lot of height sort of missing there without Derry there, but they obviously wanted to bring that physical aspect. And what did he do? He went out there and absolutely dominated. So refreshed, but also he's been given a responsibility. When guys like that give get responsibilities, they love the environment. So it's fantastic to see him play so well. The other guy I want to talk about is Bryce Heen. So when he came back into the environment, I think last year with the Blues, where was Bryce Henby? And obviously he'd been overseas, he'd played for the New Zealand seven size. This guy here, his versatility, playing both second five centre and on the wing for them. When they lost to Roger Tuovasashek, there was a question mark about, OK, how are they going to reshuffle their back line? All of a sudden, this guy here, I, I think he's been outstanding once again. A player with experience, balance, confident under pressure, doing the simple things well, not making errors. You know, and that's why... When you reintroduce Roger Tuovasashek back into the team, what does that do to the whole back line? Mm. I mean, we start, what do I do with Rico now? Well, you picked some two key aspects of the Blues game. Two guys that 
know their job, you know. They don't want to bring, they don't bring any fancy stuff. They just know their job and do their job at 100%, but do it really well. Really physical in terms of a Romano. When you look outside with him, he just does, does the basics and does them really well. That's the stability they, they've needed for a very long time, JK. So when you bring a Roger back in there, you slot him in there, then you bring a little bit of X Factor, so they're going to be dangerous. Yeah, they lost Plummer as well, which probably, you yeah. know, they'll probably go to trading and go, wow, <laughs> yeah. you know. Bryce, what do you reckon, mate? You know, <laughs> he was fantastic, I, I think, since he's been here. Last year, I thought he was really good. Played a lot of games on the wing. And when they put him there, I thought, oh, this is going to be interesting. But he probably uh, wobbled a wee bit at North Harbour a couple of times on defence, but he's fixed that up really quickly, and he's really solid now, getting the ball over the uh, advantage line. So good. So, yeah, I don't disagree. I think, um, you know, some of those older heads can really help a younger side. Because what I said um, yesterday is, this is a young blue side. And they need that experience just to calm them. And that winning experience from Romano as well, which has also very, been very helpful. Where did uh, you get that? I got that from the Crusaders, oh, funny enough. I tell you yeah. what, if you want to go down that road, I am more than happy to do it, but we are running out of time, which is very upsetting. <laughs> Mike Cron has been uh, in with the Black Ferns, uh, but he's now been brought back into the All Blacks. So let us take a look now at the All Blacks coaching unit. Jeff, I... What, what is going on here? That, that you've got coaches for coaches now. Well, look, uh, yeah, the, the interesting thing is, is both teams did a review at the end of last season. So you, you think about the All Blacks coaching team. Look, Ian Foster, John Plumtree, Greg Feek, Brad Moore. They've all been there, Scott McLeod. Joe Smith is clearly being bring into the, brought into the environment to, to add some uh, leadership and, and support around the selectors. So they've done a review, and clearly, on the back of the information from the players and their performance, they've looked at a couple of areas that they feel as though they need help. And that's... On the Ford, in the Ford pack, this comes on. And Mike Cron is one of the best in the world. He's done the job before. I, I, I'm interested to see how much hands-on work these guys are going to do. And Andrew Strawbridge, a, a skill set in terms of their execution, is another area they've highly identified. So, bottom line, it's a big team to manage, though, JK. And, and in terms of, as you know, the amount of time there is on a training pitch to prepare the players, what does it suggest to you that all of a sudden you've, there's that many voices or is this pure and simply about gathering more information and getting, I suppose, different feedback about how they can get better? Well, I could probably give you another voce di corridoio. They'll need two buses. <laughs> <laughs> one for the staff and one for the team. Um, yeah, no, I think, I, think, I think seriously for me, what, what has come out of the review and has this been done because of something that came out of the review? Mm. Um, and if that's the case, I don't mind. Yeah. I think, you know, we've got 18 tests. I keep saying well, yeah, you're not singing 18 yet. tests. <laughs> um, and I just think it's really, really important that Fozzie goes, OK, those, these were the weaknesses last year, Mills, and this is what we're going to do to fill it. I do think the concern is um, too many voices, yeah. but that's something <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll be aware of. You know, I think... Um, I don't really believe coming in to help. Your all black coaches should be the best in the world. So maybe it's filling a couple of gaps. Well, Mike Cron's proved he's the best in the world, though, Mills. He's done that before. Look, he's got a role with world, world rugby as well. I just think a lot of this is about, you know, them trying to get just that little bit of extra support. And sometimes you need a different voice to challenge you. Well, that, that's that's my concern. I, I'm similar to you, JK. The fact that we've got so many voices on here. Are we that sort of behind the rest of the world? The fact that we need guys to come in. I know there was a review based on that, but. What do you prioritise, you know, you know, leading up to these 18 sort of test matches that they're going? So when you look at France and, you know, obviously they're leading the way, but what do we need to get to that level? I know these guys have come in because we've, we've lacked a little bit of skill, uh, apparently, because, you know, of the COVID aspect as well. But what are the others? What have what the rest of the world sort of done? So are we that far behind? And I just... Some of this sort of, sort of seems to me, I hope they're not panicking too much and they really prioritise the needs of getting, you know, getting us, you know, you know back up there. It, it looks complicated. It, it does look complicated. It just, but it's necessary, and this is the All Blacks we're talking about here. So clearly they've gone to the high-performance team at New Zealand Rugby, they've gone to the board and said, this is what we need to perform, and everyone signed off on it. So everyone at New Zealand Rugby has to be in on this together. I hope they ask Wayne Smith. Everyone asks Wayne Smith. I'd ask why I, I call him all the time, but that's not about rugby. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the games that are coming up over the next uh, week. Uh, we've got Moana Pacifica taking on uh, the Canes. That's Tuesday night uh, at Sky Stadium. What do you imagine Mills will see there? Uh, well, I think the Canes will come back. I think they'll be hungry in terms of what sort of happened. One has been really physical. Um, you know, this is a big turnaround considering they play Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday again. That's a massive shift, Goldie. Who plays, JK? Who do you play if you're, you're the Hurricanes? You need to win this game. Mm. They lost to the Moana Pacifica team and Moana will look at this as an opportunity. Oh, I'm really worried about Adi Savia. You know, he puts so much into every football game that I wouldn't be playing him on Tuesday night. 
I would be hoping that the the Hurricanes would do something like the Crusaders did, because um, I think, like you said, no disrespect to Tamana Pacifica, but they, you know, that's hard. That's a hard couple of weeks, and they should be pretty, pretty fatigued. So it's gonna, it's a real difficult one, real difficult selection. Big matchup, of course, on Friday. The Crusaders taking on the Blues. One we'll all be watching with interest there. Um, and Jeff. I mean, physicality-wise, she's a big one. Sell out in KFC, I think. That'll be what's happening at uh, in, in Christchurch. That's for me. I look at this. Uh, these are the two top teams in terms of performance. The New Zealand sides. I think if you want to go to a game in Christchurch, go and watch this game. This could be a, a touch of what you're going to get later on in the season. Absolutely. Saturday, uh, Chiefs Moana Pacifica. Um, JK, you happy with that? What do you imagine is going to happen there? Good one for the Chiefs to bounce back with. Oh, they, they, they don't have a choice. Have you know, you've come. You're coming off a poor. Moana Pacifica, that's playing four games in two weeks. You don't beat them, you're in trouble. Highlanders, Canes, uh, closing out next weekend, Mills. Oh, do they, do they go another one there, Goldie? You reckon they will, wouldn't they? Oh, man, I think they were going to win every week. And how's that worked out for me so far? But come on, Brownie. We're all over it. We're all over it. <laughs> okay. Second one of the year. All right. Wee. Good luck for that one. Well, it's a great week of rugby we've just had. Great weekend coming up. Thank you guys so much for having me. You've been brilliant as always. We will see you next weekend and I'll be bringing Easter eggs because I'm just that kind of gal. We'll see you then. Now Hunt got away beautifully and sent it wide and the opening try scored. Slips the pass and away it goes and Kipripi scores. Should open up here. And a try scored by Compton Strange is for Morby. And Morby scores in the corner. And here's Bill Jordan. He left too much pace. Well, what a great sight it is as we look down on the stadium. Nico Yoani puts the foot down. Yoani, oh, just taken. Now the